been met, and welcome to my macabre movie mania. <laughs> it was an inevitability that I would need to talk about the subject of today's movie, and that is the horror remake. <laughs> So tonight, we are discussing the best remake of all time, 1986's The Fly! <laughs> no, be afraid. Be very afraid. We're not quite there yet, Gina. For those of you that don't know, the original Fly came out in 1958 and starred Al Hedston and Patricia Owens. It followed the same general plot that a man creating a teleportation device has a fly come into said device and slowly turn him into a fly man creature. <laughs> the initial idea for Remaking this film came in the early 80s by producer Kip Omen, and he brought up this idea with his writer friend Charles Pro, and they began work on The Fly. <laughs> 20th Century Fox greenlit the project on the assumption that they would get additional funding from an outside source. That source would be Legendary comedian, Mel Brooks! Really? That's... That's really weird. That's weird, right? Brooks decided to leave his name off the movie. So people wouldn't get the idea that it would be a comedy. And of course, he was very right. They started the work of finding a director for their piece. Their first choice was David Cronenberg, who originally did Scanners and Videodrome. But he turned down the project because he was going to be working on the Total Recall movie. With the hindsight of history, of course we know, he did not direct Total Recall. And when that movie fell through, he did jump right on board with The Fly. And on August 15th, 1986, we were given The Fly. <laughs> no. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Not yet, Gina! God! The Fly is a story of brilliant yet eccentric scientist Seth Brundle, played by sex icon Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> he is developing a teleportation device, something which we could all use in today's world, don't you think? And his progress is being documented by writer Veronica Quaith, played by Gina Davis. Hey Chris, whatever happened to Gina Davis? She used to be in movies, but she's not in movies anymore. She's attractive enough, but when she smiles, you see too much gum. Not a good tooth-to-gum ratio. During a test on himself, of course, a fly finds its way into his teleportation pod, and the computer decides to fuse the DNA of both Seth Brundle and the fly, creating... Brundle fly. <laughs> Gina, that was her cue. God, can't work with people here. No, be afraid. Be very afraid. At first, he feels great after this teleportation as he's gained the fly's relative strength and energy, but then slowly starts turning into the fly. <laughs> and 
And this brings up an interesting point. Because not only is this the first horror remake I'm discussing, but this is also the first body horror movie I'm discussing. Ha <laughs> ha! Body horror for the uninitiated is a subgenre of horror movies that shows graphic representations of transformation, disintegration, and destruction of the human body. Notable body horror movies are The Thing uh, from 1982, The Hellraiser movies, and Slither. <laughs> and this movie does not have a deep mystery or an intensive plot, but it is about the slow transformation from Seth Brundle to Brundle Fly, as every time we revisit the character, He's become worse, and worse, and worse. I can see the lifeless, I can feel the darkness under This movie is held up by amazing acting from Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis. Seth soon hypothesizes that if he were to fuse with more humans, that it would dilute the fly DNA within his own body, turning him more into a human and subsiding the fly side effects. So he kidnaps Veronica decides he's going to fuse together in what he's called. We'll be the ultimate family. A family of three joined together in one body. More human than I am alone. Veronica's boss interrupts the transportation sequence, causing an accident which causes Brundlefly to fuse with the machinery of the pod and become a more hellish beast. And knowing the pain that he's going through, Veronica chooses to end Brundlefly's life. <laughs> Leaving us on a dark, disturbing, Of course, the most famous parts of these movies are... No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Yes, Gina, your line. And of course, the amazing practical effects made by Chris Walls, who also did the makeup and all the designs for the Brundle Fly. The Fly was a huge success, making $60 million on a $15 million budget and was praised both commercially and critically, 
Roger Eber absolutely loving the movie, calling it one of the 10 best movies of 1986. And actually won an Academy Award for Best Makeup. <laughs> Most people consider this one of Jeff Goldblum's best movies, winning him a Saturn Award for Best Actor. The Fly was followed up in 1989 with The Fly 2, which you know, wasn't as good, I don't know, wasn't really feeling it, I don't know. And The Fly Trilogy was finally finished in 2015 in comic book form with The Fly Outbreak, published by IDW, which continues the events left off from Fly 2. In 2003, there was discussions of remaking The Fly, which in and of itself was a remake. So remake of a remake. Remakeception! Of course, this would never come to fruition. In 2012, David Cronenberg said he was working on his own sequel to The Fly, which would have ignored The Fly too, but there has been no movement on this, leaving the future of the Fly Saga in disarray. <laughs> I find this movie to be one of the best, not only body horror movies and remakes, but just a fantastic movie in and of itself. The practical effects and the amazing makeup definitely heighten the scenes, but is also held up by some amazing acting. I fully enjoy this movie. It creeps you out, leaves you uneasy, and gives you those weird feelings. Especially when he's pulling his fingernails off. It So I suggest if you haven't seen The Fly yet, you should check it out. It is amazing. Now, if you go, excuse me, Igor has finished my own teleportation pod. Are we ready, Igor? I'll be right back. Okay, apparently Igor left his lunch in the teleportation pod. Igor, we gotta fix this. So ends another episode of Macabre Movie Mania. What'd you think of The Fly? Do you think all remakes are terrible? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think. Also, hit that thumbs up if you could, it would uh, make me feel pretty awesome. And if you're not too busy, check out one of these two other videos. They are very great, if I do say so myself. Also, always remember, I vote on the upcoming episodes of Macabre Movie Mania, so follow me at wizard underscore Matt to make sure you get your vote in and get your voice heard. Thanks again for watching.